JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 16th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Tuesday during the Asian morning Wednesday. It gained versus SEC, the Euro, the Canadian dollar, the Swiss franc and NOC in that order, while it underperformed against the yen, the pound and the New Zealand dollar. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus the Australia, the Australian dollar. Now the strengthening of the yen suggests uh, that uh, markets traded in a risk of fashion yesterday, however the fact that the Kiwi was also among the gainers points, points otherwise. Thus in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here major EU and US indices traded in uh, positive waters with the only exception being the Dow Jones which closed virtually unchanged. That said, investors' appetite eased during the Asian morning today, perhaps as investors turned uh, more cautious ahead of the FOMC decision later in the day. Japan's Nikkei closed uh, virtually a change, while China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI are down 0.39, 0.33 and 0.42% respectively. This uh, will be one of the largest uh, FOMC meetings uh, where apart, apart from the decision and the press conference we also get updated economic projections and a new dot plot. A few weeks ago, speaking at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, Fed uh, Chief Powell said that the Fed will now target a 2% average inflation and put emphasis on broader and inclusive employment with uh, the shift motivated by underlying changes to the economy including uh, lower potential growth, persistently lower interest rates and low inflation. Although he added that the committee is not tying itself to any particular method to define average inflation, this means that the Fed is willing to tolerate above 2% inflation for a while before raising interest rates, which implies extra loose monetary policy for longer. What's more, in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it was revealed that additional accommodation may be required. Now, according to, mar to market chatter, officials may switch their treasury purchases towards more long-dated bonds in order to keep uh, long-term yields low, with expectations increasing amid a, st a stalemate in uh, government and Congress talks over a new coronavirus aid bill. Having said that, though, we see these chan uh, chances for the Fed to refrain from acting at this gathering. Last Friday, inflation data showed that uh, both the headline and core CPI rates for August came in higher than expected, which combined with the decent NFP gains uh, during the month may allow officials to stay sidelined and monitor how the economic activity progresses from now onwards. If this is the case, it would be interesting to see whether they are planning to alter their policy at one of the upcoming gatherings. At one of the upcoming gatherings. Another point of interest would uh, be the updated economic projections and the new dot plot. From those forecasts, investors could find out how much of inflation overshoot officials are willing to tolerate before they start considering any interest rate hikes. Now, in terms of uh, market reaction, the US dollar could weaken and equities could uh, rise instantly if the Fed decides uh, to switch its, uh, its um, bond purchases to more long dated bonds. The opposite may be true if they, if they refrain from doing so. However, in case they remain willing to act and signal that rates will stay at present levels even if inflation rises so well above uh, 2%, any such reaction is likely to stay short-lived. Eventually, the dollar could give up its decision-related gains and equities may resume their recoveries. 
For any dollar strength or uh, stock market weakness to be sustained, the Fed may need to signal that additional easing may not be required for the next few months, and the new, and the new dot plot may have to point to at least a hike when and if inflation overshoots uh, the target. Having said uh, all that, though, with uh, what we have in hand at the moment, we see the last scenario as, uh, as uh, the least likely. Now, as for the rest of today's events, uh, during the EU session we have the UK CPIs for August. Both the headline and core CPI rates are expected to have tumbled to 0.1 and 0.6% year over year from 1% and 1.0% respectively. At the latest Bank of England gathering, policymakers uh, kept monetary policy unchanged, while in the quarterly monetary policy report it was noted that officials discussed the effectiveness of negative interest rates and noted that they will continue to monitor their appropriateness. What's more, on September the 2nd, Governor uh, Bailey said that uh, negative uh, rates are still a tool in the bank's uh, toolbox, although they are not planning to use it at the moment. Ahead of the previous gathering, there was some speculation that the bank may at some point decide to cut rates uh, sub-zero, and, and the notable slowdown in inflation may revive sub such speculation. From the US, besides uh, the FOMC decision, we also have retail sales for August, while from Canada we get the CPIs for the month. Headline sales in the US are expected to have slowed to 1% month over month from 1.2%, while the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 0.9% month over month from 1.9%. With regards to Canada's inflation, the headline CPI rate is expected to have risen to 0.4% from 0.1% year over year, while no forecast is available for the core rate. With regards to the energy market, we have the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. The forecast points to a 1.271 million barrels inventory build, following a 2.032 million increase the week uh, before. That said, bearing in mind that uh, yesterday the American Petroleum Institute reported a 9.517 million inventory slide, we would consider the risks surrounding the EIA forecast as tilted to the downside. As uh, for the speakers, besides Fed Chair Powell, who will uh, hold a press conference following the FOMC decision, we will, we will also get to hear from Ms. B Chief Economist Philip Lane. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about uh, the main events of the week much earlier, you can, you can su subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.